So before capturing the data, what I'm going to do is go through a few areas that you might come into contact with. Firstly, I've plugged the device into my laptop. On the device, I have a blue light on the button, which tells me it's connected and it's ready to capture data. On the screen, I can also see that my calibration light is green, so I know that the calibration file has been transferred from the free start to my laptop. Also, every time you start seeing capture, you have a dialog box that asks you whether you would like to do a calibration. All I'm gonna do is click no on that. And then to induce some errors, what I'm actually going to do is go in and change my range to target to be half a meter. I'm gonna leave detect markers and flash off for now, and I'm gonna leave the default name. So as soon as we're ready, if I take the device, press the button on the back, this will automatically start up scene capture into capture mode. And straight away on the right hand side, you can see that the video camera is starting to capture data of where I'm moving the device around from and to. The green dots are being projected by the projector and it's picking up points of interest which tells me that I've got a good distribution of measurable points. It's also tracking where it's been and where it's going to so it can link the frames together. On the left hand side you can see that no physical data is being collected but I do have this symbol here which enables me to turn the flash on or off in areas which become dark. So if I turn that on, you can straight away see on the right hand side that it's become more illuminated or I can turn it off. We can also toggle the views by clicking on the icons here, either into track mode, in scanning mode, or having everything on. So if ever you find yourself with no windows on the screen, simply click on those icons there and you're away. So what I'm actually going to do is press stop on that scan because I'm not close enough to the data. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the settings and change them. First off, you can see on the screen, all I have is a yellow or orange line. And this is telling me that this is the path I've traced with the scanner, but actually there is no data behind it. So all we do is click on options and we're gonna change that back to five meters. At the same time as doing that, I'm gonna click detect markers. And I'm also gonna turn on the flash. When I'm happy that everything's set up, close the dialog box, take the freestyle again, press the start button. And now what you'll see is a series of yellow animated areas. And this is telling me that the data capture is good. So areas where I haven't got yellow are areas where it's not capturing data. And on the left hand side, you can start to see the point cloud building up. The slower I move, the more data is being captured because the resolution is controlled by the speed and the angle at which you're moving the device. So if you start to twist the device, if I twist to the right, you'll notice that the image on the right and the left are starting to twist, but I'm actually capturing data in and around behind that sphere. If you inadvertently move too quickly, then what you'll get on the screen is the system telling you that in the bottom right-hand corner, this is the point at which we lost tracking and then the top left is the active camera, which is saying, position yourself in that location, and I'll continue to scan. So you can see there, all I did was slowly move across. What I'm going to do now is press stop. This will then return back to the screen. It will load all the steps from each scan or each frame into the system. It will then save that data, and we're ready to start viewing the data. Now, if I was scanning a vertical object, what I would probably do is move in horizontal strokes, either starting at the top or starting at the bottom. If I were doing a horizontal object, say a window or a large cupboard or something like that, then I would move in long vertical strokes. The reason for this is that when we go into scene process, we have the ability to split a scan. So for instance, if you've moved too quickly and you've lost the frame connection between scans, what you can do is use the split command in scene process, which I'll show you in the next movie, and roll back the movie to the point of which the error occurred, and you can then split the data. Then, using the registration functionality in scene process, you can join that data back together again. So on the screen, you'll see the results of our scan. If I click the center of rotation, and I can zoom in and start to rotate around and look at the data. Because the system has no built-in inclinometer, we also have the ability to level a scan. Just by simply picking three points on the floor, that will level the scan and tell me that that particular area is flat. 
on the screen so it aligns back to our common UCS. A bit of time. What I've actually done is gone in and performed two scans in the cupboard. I've done one covering the left hand side of the cupboard and one covering the right hand side of the cupboard. I haven't spent too long trying to pick up the detail. I thought I'd just create the scans that I can then link into the focus data at a later date. So before we move on to the next subject in the room, one little tip. What you'll see here is now we've done the scans, we've got scan 01 and scan 02. If we do further scans in the project, those are obviously going to be called scan 03 and scan 04 and so on and so forth. But I'm actually doing two different subjects in the same room, but in the same project. So what I'm going to do in here is start to rename and structure the scans. I'm thinking about when I bring this data into Faro scene and I start to link it with focus data. So first off, in the same way as we would do in Faro scene, I'm going to create a new cluster. This cluster is going to be called cupboard. Click OK. And I'm going to pop scans one and two into that cluster. If I don't rename the scans in scene capture, then when I bring them into process and ultimately Faro scene, once they've been processed, I can't change the name. So all I'm going to do in here to make it easier for me to understand, I'm going to rename this one here to be cupboard underscore one, and then this one here to be cupboard underscore two. I've now got both scans underneath their own cluster. In doing this as well, it means that I can treat both these scans separately when it comes to registration. To aid the registration, what you can see on the screen straight away is that I've placed several markers in the environment and the system, because I had the detect mark option turned on, has automatically picked up those markers, which when I then go into the registration process, it should pick those up and make the registration process a lot easier. In the room, I've also got another subject that I'd like to scan. All I'm going to do is press the button on the freestyle again this will initialize the sensor and straight away we're into scan mode. So I'm just going to move up and collect a couple of targets first, which will aid in my registration. And then move across the subject, which as you can see is a fighter jet. As I move across, you can see that it's automatically picking up some of the markers that I've placed. This will allow me to get a little bit more detail which I probably couldn't get with a focus scanner because I'd have to do multiple locations. But all I'm going to do is move slowly across the surface and then keep a, an eye that I'm picking up my markers on the right hand side. So again, what I'm going to do is a couple of scans, press the stop button. Again, the system will save the frames and it will create scan number one over on the left hand side. As you can see, because I've renamed the cupboard scans, it's automatically created another scan number one. Again, now I've got that side covered. I'm just gonna pick up on the wall over here, pick up the marker, pick up the marker on the top. Now we don't have to use markers. I don't have to use targets. All this will become apparent when we go into scene process. But for the purposes of this, they're just static based markers that are non-adhesive but capture onto the surface and just make the process of registration a lot easier. So again, just move consistently over the area just to pick up all the data that I potentially missed on the first scan and then press the stop button again. Again, before we move on to another scan, what we can do is set the rotation point on the screen, zoom in, set a level on the floor, make sure we've got all the data captured that we needed to. Because I'm in scan two here, I'm actually going to rename it and call it plane two. And then we'll check scan one. Again, click on the screen, click a rotation point. Again, rename this one to be plane one. And again, I'm going to create a new cluster. Now, when I import this data into scene process, it will automatically bring in these clusters. 
Also, when I get to the movie where I'm going to combine Faro Focus data with Faro Freestyle data, when I import this project into Faro Scene, where I already have my focus data set up, it will automatically bring in these clusters as well. So straight away, I'm starting to build some structure. If we go back into cupboard, and a couple of things we can start to do in here, we can start to take dimensions. So we have a dimension tool, whereby if we click on a surface, and click on the floor, again, similar to Faro Scene, it will start to give us the distance between the two. So we've got 1.9 meters. We can also start to play around with things like the point spacing. So just by clicking on the point size, it will change the view. We can flip between fly mode and examine mode. And we can also toggle between orthographic and perspective. That about covers the use of Faro Scene Capture. The most important thing I need to remember to do now is to click Save. In the next movie, we'll look at bringing this data into Faro Scene process and linking the scans together, both in their own individual clusters. And then in a further movie, we'll look at bringing that data into Faro Scene and linking it directly with Faro Focus scans. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been of use. And please feel free to look out for forthcoming movies.